Good morning or afternoon or wherever you are. This is uh, Tech for Senior. This is episode 160. And it is, of course, April the 24th. Uh, it is a gorgeous sunny day in Comox, British Columbia, where I am. I'm Ron Brown, and I'll be your host today. Next week, Huey will be your host. So we he's uh, he's he's busily taking notes as we go along here. <laughs> Anyway, welcome. This is uh, our show. We'll be, we'll be with you for uh, for about the next hour. We have um, a a great uh, a great show for you today. Uh, if you are out in the audience, we do appreciate you coming and thank you. If you are uh, watching this uh, on a uh, you as a YouTube replay, uh, thanks so much. If you are watching this as a YouTube short, just click the link and it'll take you right to the show. Our show is, of course, uh, recorded and is available uh, on our website. It's www.techforsenior.com, uh, and that'll take you right to our YouTube channel. Today on the show, we have uh, a big show for you today. Uh, we, of course, have uh, our introduction, which I'm doing now. And then, of course, Bob is going to talk about security news update and uh, cyber spring cleaning should be interesting. We're then going to go uh, and um, we'll talk a little bit about this, but Huey's going to show us how to transcribe a video file. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. And I'm going to do part two of supercharging your uh, Gmail. Uh, Huey's then going to talk about uh, AI in 2023. And then uh, Ray is in, under the knife again today. So I'll be doing his music outro and playing it for him. He's recorded it. We then have, of course, a, our Q&A, which is our question and answer period, and we'll answer all your questions. And then at half past the hour, we will have our premiere service for you. And uh, Dewey, not Huey, but Dewey Clues will be talking about giving a summary of EV batteries. We've already talked about that, but this is a good summary for you. Uh, Bill James, of course, is going to do this time, you know, he's a man of many talents, so he's doing uh, he's doing Windows tips today. And then, of course, I'm going to talk about cardiac monitoring with your smartwatch. So there's uh, so there's something for everybody, and that will be in the uh, premiere um, premiere video at um, at half past the hour. And I'll be putting the link in the in the show. But of course. The link is uh, in our uh, newsletter on Saturday. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to our newsletter, please do. It comes out twice a week on Tuesdays and Saturday. So, uh, uh, and you can do that, of course, at www.techforsenior.com. So today we have, um, let's see, we have, uh, Huey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Getting ready for, uh, Learning Chromebooks, like that's this right. Week. Yeah, yeah, we do learning Chromebooks on Thursday, right? And I'm trying to keep up with this AI stuff, and it, they keep throwing more and more at me. So, <laughs> yeah, and we also we I didn't mention that we do our Thursday show, which of course is uh, technology news. So if you haven't yep. uh, haven't seen our Thursday show, please come and listen. But here's the there's one little secret we need to tell you: it's not a Zoom meeting, right? So we always get people logging into our Zoom account. But it's not a Zoom meeting. You, uh, it's broadcast to our Facebook page and to our YouTube channel. And again, the link in our www.techforsenior.com will be there. And it's um, and just click that link, and it'll take you right there. Bob, how the heck are you doing? Just fine. Another nice day. Uh, hopefully, we're going to start getting some evenings where it doesn't go to frost anymore. Mm -hmm. Alice bought a tomato plant that I had to bring it in almost every night. That's not good. I don't like <laughs> tomato plants in the house. <laughs> and Bill James, are you, uh, you're a busy guy. Thank you. Well, yeah, getting ready for um, Wednesday's big Windows versus Mac comparison presentation. Right. For, I see uh, you're on a Mac again today. I am. Are you are you gonna are you going to the dark side totally or what? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> All right. And Mike Ungerman, you've got sort of not a 
bit of a frown, not quite a big smile. It must be raining in Florida, right? Going to be, yes. But the electricity in Florida isn't that expensive, only 13 cents a kilowatt hour. All right. And you're making your own anyway, so what What the heck, right? I've <laughs> right. already sent it to them. They can send it back now. <laughs> All right. Bob, let's get rolling. Uh, do you want to get rolling with your security update? Why not? Let's get started. Here is my security news roundup got it, got it. for the week ending April 21st, 2023. Cisco and VMware release security updates to patch critical flaws in products. Cisco and VMware have released security updates to address critical security flaws in their products that could be exploited by malicious actors to execute arbitrary code on affected systems. A successful exploit could allow the attacker to execute arbitrary commands as NT authority system on the underlying operating system of an affected device. Cisco said in an advisory released on April 19, 2023, patches have been made available on versions 1.11.3, with Cisco crediting an unnamed external researcher for reporting the two issues. Read more at thehackernews.com. American Bar Association data breach hits 1.4 million members. Thursday night, the ABA began notifying members that a hacker was detected on its network on March 17, 2023, and may have gained access to members' login credentials for a legacy member system decommissioned in 2018. On March 17, 2023, the ABA observed unusual activity on its network. The incident response plan was immediately activated. Response and security experts were retained to assist with the investigation. The ABA recommends that members change their passwords on the site and any other sites utilizing the same credentials. Read more at bleepingcomputer.com. Seagate fined $300 million for selling hard disk drives to blacklisted Huawei. U.S. computer storage giant Seagate has been fined $300 million for shipping over 7 million hard disk drives to Huawei despite a Commerce Department ban prohibiting exports to the Chinese tech company. Seagate said the deal was in the best interest of the firm and its shareholders. The company noted it will pay off the $300 million fine in $15 million chunks every quarter for the next five years. It seems that profit is really all that matters. Read more at gizmodo.com. Atari acquires the rights to over 100 PC and console classics. Atari is really gunning for a comeback with a multi-year effort to transform the company and investments in IPs people care about. Reimaging versions of Asteroids and Missile Command are reportedly in the works. Just last month, Atari put through deals for Night Drive Studios and the IPs of 12 Stern Electronics arcade classics, including Berserk and Frenzy. With its latest purchase, Atari says it will release already existing games on modern consoles and create new adaptations of past storylines. Read more at Engadget.com. Netflix's new password sharing fees to hit U.S. customers by summer. After testing account sharing fees in Latin America last year, Netflix implemented its new policy in February in four regions, including Canada and Spain. Now, for many subscribers in the U.S., it's the moment they have not been waiting for. Password sharing fees are officially rolling out in the second quarter, which would be by the end of June. In Canada, where account sharing fees have rolled out, Netflix says its paid subscriber base is larger than prior to the launch of paid sharing. Time and actual customer reactions will tell. 
Read more at CNET.com. Another zero-day vulnerability is plaguing Chrome. Google Chrome has been having a rough week. Google just released the patch for the second zero-day exploit in the last week. This one is apparently being actively exploited online, so you should update Chrome immediately to protect yourself. As you might imagine, it's quite a severe issue. While we're not aware of how it's being exploited in the wild, Google is aware of at least one exploit going around. As such, you should still update Chrome as soon as you can in order to ensure your online experience is as secure as it can possibly be. Those on Windows and Mac can get the update right now, while it might take a while to roll out to other platforms, including Linux. Read more on HowToGeek.com. Amazon launches program to identify and track counterfeiters. Amazon has launched its Anti-Counterfeiting Exchange, an initiative to help retail stores label and track marketplace counterfeits as part of the e-commerce giant's efforts to crack down on organized crime on its platform. The company announced on Thursday, we think it is critical to share information about confirmed counterfeiters to help the entire industry stop these criminals earlier. Dharmesh Mehta, Amazon's Vice President of Selling Partner Services, said in a statement. Read more at financeyahoo.com. This week's Must See on my YouTube channel. From daily routines to monthly rituals, here's to your cyber health. To learn all the information you need for a successful cyber spring cleaning, please watch my video on that topic at the link listed. Did you know the annual number of worldwide shark bites is 10 times less than the number of people bitten by other people in New York? In 1907, an ad campaign for Kellogg's Corn Flakes offered a free sample of cereal to any woman who would wink at her grocer. Ada Lovelace, poet Lord Byron's daughter, wrote the first algorithm created specifically for a machine. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest, thanks to Benjamin Franklin. I just thought you might want to know. That wraps up my security news roundup for this week. Stay safe, stay secure, and God willing, I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Cyber Spring Cleaning My thanks to Emma McGowan for her excellent article on this topic. You'll find her article at the link listed. From daily routines to monthly rituals, here's to your cyber health. With any spring cleaning project, a checklist can help you remember all the essential tasks for organizing, decluttering, and maintaining your physical home. The same is needed to keep your digital home spotless and secure. Clean all devices. Just like objects and surfaces throughout your home, your digital devices are also prone to collecting germs, crumbs, and dust. Use a microfiber cloth to wipe away smudges and disinfect your phone, laptops, and tablets. Organize critical files. Leverage a digital organization system to help organize your critical files and avoid an excess of duplicate documents from cluttering your desktop. Create label folders to manage these files for quick and easy access when needed. Back up essential files. Export all important files to an external hard drive or cloud storage. Knowing that your data is backed up provides much needed security and peace of mind in your digital home. Clear out. Inboxes. Keep your email clutter-free by unsubscribing from e-newsletters and deleting old emails. A backlog of unread or partially read emails 
can cause personal and private information to get buried and become accessible to hackers. Practice password hygiene. A good password is like the key to your digital home that protects you from cyber threats. Routinely updating passwords and creating unique combinations containing upper and lower case letters, numbers, and symbols reduces the risk of hack credentials. Check security settings. Make sure your online accounts have the most up-to-date privacy settings to protect against potential cyber threats. Review your social media and email profiles and manually adjust the privacy settings to avoid sharing information you don't want accessed or published online. Update all devices. Stay on top of the latest features that protect data, improve performance, and patch security flaws on your devices. As mentioned in maintaining your digital home, take a moment to check that you have enabled automatic software updates to defend against potential threats and maintain a tidy digital home. Install antivirus software. Secure your digital home with Avast Antivirus. I personally have used their free version since 2003. Why not install it on your system today? Just follow the link listed. Tidy up social media. Go through your social media accounts, such as Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and delete, unfollow, and unfriend social media bots or people you no longer interact with. Throw out digital trash. Toss out digital clutter as you would junk from your garage. As mentioned in decluttering your digital home, wipe out all existing data and follow all recycling guidelines when discarding your digital devices. These are must-dos to achieve optimum cyber health, so please bookmark this video to keep it handy. Happy year-around cyber cleaning! Stay safe, stay secure. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye and thanks for watching and listening. Thanks, Bob. Um, Sorry for the delay. No problem, no problem. All right, um, I wanted to... Um, sort of just give you a history of the next topic we're going to talk about today. And that is, of course, um, transcribing with Word. Now, you, you everyone knows that um, I want to talk a little bit about Ray's segment that he does. Everyone knows that what uh, Ray does is he, he, um, he talks about his written part and then he plays a video of the music. So when he sends me that, he sends it to me in a document form. So when I do the newsletter on Tuesday, I just can insert that in the document. But of course, he had two weeks ago, he had his cataract done. And he sent me, of course, the video file. He did it all perfectly. And, and I played that while he was having his surgery. Well, when it came time to do the newsletter on Tuesday, that didn't work out very well because it's not a it's not a Word document. It's a video file, an MP4 file. And how do you put an MP4 file into a, into a newsletter? And that became a big problem. But Huey taught me a trick two years ago, about a year and a half ago. He taught me this feature, and you can actually transcribe a video file in, in Word. Now, uh, and I thought it was, uh, and I used that, and I transcribed it and put it in the newsletter, and it took me only a few few seconds to do that. So it works out very well. And I thought it, it was worthwhile just re, um, replaying this video for you. Also, things have changed. And it used to be that this process only occurred with Word Online.
but is now present any any current version of Word that you have, if you have or Office 365 and you have it on your PC, you can do this. Now, it not only would work well if, if you had to do something like I just described, but also sometimes I'm watching a lot of technical videos on YouTube, like stuff that's really complicated and I have to keep playing it over and over again. So it's much easier. I just transcribe it. I just I just download it, transcribe it, and it's it's there for me in a document format. So this is I thought this is a great trick that you should uh, we should just talk about one more time. So let me play the video, and we'll um, we'll then talk about this later. Hi, I'm Huey Poplock. Last week on Tech for Seniors, I talked about dictating to a Google Doc and how to do it. Today I want to talk about using Microsoft Office Online, particularly using Word, and I'm going to go a little I'm going to go a step farther than dictating but I am going to show you how you can dictate using the Microsoft Office Word and then I'm going to show you something that's brand new in Word in the paid or premium version of Microsoft Office so let's go to Microsoft Office and I'm going to open up Word I'm going to create a blank document you'll see that it this is all online I have even though I do have word installed on my computer this is using the online version now if you have a free online version you can do what I'm going to be showing you for this part the next part will only be for the paid subscribers so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up where the microphone is and notice it says dictate under dictate, I have two choices, dictate and transcribed. For this first part, we're going to just talk about dictate. I'm just going to show you how easy it is with Microsoft Word to do the same thing that I talked about last week, new paragraph. Locast is a U.S. nonprofit streaming television service that allows users to view live streams of over-the-air television stations, period. These signals are sourced from antennas in each market it serves. All you have to do is sign up online, provide your name and email address, and certify that you live in and are logging on from one of the select U.S. cities known as designated market area period new paragraph and we stop the recording or we stop the uh, uh, dictation so this is what we showed you what i showed you last week but so it's capable of doing much the same thing and it does a very good job of it by the way this is part of an article from one of my blogs from huey.net but what I want to show you is we're going to open up a new document. We'll do a new blank document. And this time in Word, what we're going to do is instead of dictate, we're going to transcribe. And what transcribe means is that we're able to either upload an audio or start dictating, which would basically be what we were just doing. But we're going to upload an audio file. What I did is I took uh, two minutes of discussion from one of my Windows Special Interest Group meetings. Uh, in the, actually, it wasn't during the meeting. It was before the meeting where we just were talking back and forth. And I took a two-minute section out of that. And I am going to upload that. And this is the clip I'm going to upload. It's two minutes long. It's 10 megabytes. It's actually a minute and 43 seconds. And we're going to say open it and open it. Now I'm going to leave the, the recording going here and just be talking to show you real time how long a two minute uh, hour, I'm sorry, a minute and 43 seconds 
it takes to do the transcribing. And then I'm going to show you what you can do with that transcribing. What we're doing is we're taking an audio and visual file. It's an MP4. It actually has pictures to it, and I'll show it to you uh, when we're done with this, just so you see what's going on. Probably should have done, uh, uh, did that before, but it's taking that and it's transcribing it. What it's doing, it's doing the dictation that we did, doing from a recording directly into Word. And you'll see how it does it and, how, and some things that you can do with it in that transcription. So it's about 75, a little over three quarters done. It'll be done here in just a few more seconds. Again, the reason I'm, I'm not cutting this, I wanted you to see in real time how long this takes, which isn't very long considering, uh, uh, you know, it's an hour, uh, a minute and 43 seconds. If you've got a real long file, you're going to go out and get a cup of coffee and come back. So it's not quick, but there we go. And there you can see on the right is our transcription. It's still not in our document. You'll see at the bottom it says add all to document, or you can do a new transcription. Let me go ahead and play part of this for you so you can see what it's what it's doing. Now Ron, Ron is going to bail on me today, and he's going to see the... Uh... The propeller heads, the geeks on tour. So I'm Canadian. Who asked, who asked about the Canadians? That was Bob G. We've got, I think it was Bob G. Uh, no. No? Okay. Well, we have uh, uh, my co-host for the... Okay, so you can see that it, it goes back and forth. Uh, uh, in most cases, it recognizes it was a different speaker. Uh, it didn't pick up Bob G's, uh, it picked his, it didn't pick up what he said, but you see there's, it says speaker one, speaker two. Now what I can do is I know speaker one is me, so I can go like this and say speaker one, highlight it, and then change that to Huey, and you'll see down here, there's a box here first, I want to change all of speaker one, wherever it says speaker one, that's me, so I want to go ahead and click on that, change all of them, and then click this. Bingo. So every one of those that said speaker one is Huey. Now I know that speaker two is Nancy. So I'm going to change that to Nancy and click on this and click OK or confirm. It's now changed any time that Nancy spoke, it put Nancy's name. Speaker three was Stan. So I'm going to change that to Stan. Again, change all speaker three to Stan. Go ahead, click the check mark, confirm. And now all of them are changed. Now, Stan said something here where he said, let's see what he says here. Let's see if I can, I can, I can pick it up from here. Or I, I haven't figured out exactly how to get it. Post for the Tech for Seniors is in go. Vancouver. And so... Okay. We are well represented with Canadians on that show, and some of them come into this show, that show, and well, some me, of them, some of them come into this show as. Let me back that up. Into this show as well. Uh, my co-host for the Tech for Seniors is in Vancouver, and so okay. we are well represented with Canadians on that show, and some of them come into this show as well, into this meeting. Okay, so I'm I'm Nancy. I'm from Sanford, Florida, but I've been here. I became a citizen in 1980, so I'm naturalized. And Stan said, I didn't know that, and it picked it up as Walmart. So we can just go ahead and say, I. And we say, OK. So it changed the text. Now I can say, add all to, down, to the document. And there is my transcription. I don't have to save it because it's. Uh, Word Online, there is a way, but you'll notice at the beginning it also put the transcription in there or the actual file or told me where the file is. And uh, let me just show you very quickly. Now, Ron, Ron is going to bail on me today and he's going to see the, uh, the propeller heads, the geeks on tour. <laughs> So I'm Canadian. Who asked, who asked about the Canadians? That was Bob G. 
So you see that that's what I took it from. You'll see that the article is here. The transcription is done. Did a nice job. I'm able to change it very quickly so you see what I said. And we have a transcription of everything that we have said from a recording from a Zoom meeting. So another piece of what you can do with your computer that you probably haven't been doing. And again, this is using the paid version of Word online. And I pay $99 for, I think it's six licenses that I can give to anyone who I want for uh, a, each year. So it's $100 a year by six. It's less than $20 a person per year. So, uh, and you can buy a single license, I believe it's for like 70, 69 or $79 for the year. So uh, you can have this service uh, for that amount. I have another, I'm working another presentation that will be using the free version of Microsoft Office Online. It will not have the capability to, to do the transcribing, but it will have the ability to do the dictation. Here are a few notes that I'd like to add to this presentation. Transcribe in Word is available today in Word for the web for all Microsoft 365 subscribers and is supported in the new Microsoft Edge or Chrome browsers. With Transcribe, you are completely unlimited into how much you can record and transcribe within Word for the web. Remember, we talked about or I mentioned that you had the choice of either recording or uploading. This is in the recording portion. Currently, there is a five-hour limit per month for uploaded recordings, and each uploaded recording is limited to 200 megabytes. So you want to use the audio portion of a Zoom meeting and not the video and audio uh, file. Transcribe and Office Mobile will be coming by the end of the year. Currently, transcribing audio into English is the only language supported, but they are working on support for more languages. The recording is linked at the top of the document, if you remember, and it is linked to a copy that is stored, that it stores on your OneDrive. So that's it for transcribing with my... Yeah, and just uh, something else I discovered that uh, that I didn't say in the video is where the time is next to what is showing that's is transcribed. If you click that time, it'll play that part of the transcription, uh, the audio portion. And the other thing, Huey, you didn't mention was that it um, you don't have to put the speakers in. There's an option there. If you don't want the speakers, you don't have to, and it just dumps it all into the Word document. Yes. So if you are doing if you're doing it like I mentioned, the technical article. You wouldn't want to, you don't need to know who's saying what, you just want the information. So you can just leave it as a whole. All right, we'll probably have some more questions about that in the Q&A. <clears throat> let's, um, let's move ahead now. And I want to play um, <clears throat> Supercharging Your Gmail. Ron Brown with Tech Christine here. If you're like most people, your inbox can quickly become overwhelming. With dozens, if not hundreds, of messages flooding into your inbox every day, it can be difficult to stay on top and manage your time efficiently. That's where artificial intelligence comes in. Compose AI is a tool that provides advanced email composition capabilities by leveraging artificial intelligence. With using machine learning algorithms, Compose AI can help write emails faster. In this video, we'll explore five specific ways that AI can supercharge your Gmail productivity so you can get more done in less time. Today, I'm going to be showing you artificial intelligence in Gmail using a, a Chrome extension called Compose AI. This extension has a free and paid component. Today, I'll be using the free component and at the end of the video, I'll be giving you my impression and recommendation. To obtain this extension, we'll just go over to the Compose AI website and download the extension for our Chrome browser. 
It easily installs. It will be available for you right after installation. You can turn the extension on or off. And in my experience, it works quickly and doesn't interfere with the speed of your computer. It sits as resident in your Gmail software. So in this video, I'm going to be going over five features of Compose AI that will help you increase your productivity in Gmail. So the first feature of Compose AI I'm going to show you is called Compose Anything. Let's have a look. All right, here we are in my Gmail account and I have created a email that we're going to put some body and text into. You'll see that uh, I have um, installed Compose AI. You'll see that at the bottom here it says written with Compose AI. And to start AI, all that you have to do is put your cursor in the body of the text and two forward slashes. And this brings up, of course, the Compose AI menu. So the first thing you'll notice when you forward slash twice, you'll see that it brings up the AI menu. So when using AI for writing, the first thing you want is to define what thing you want. And if you come down the menu here, of course, you can type anything you want in this line, but let's come down because Compose AI has already predefined some templates for you. Let's have a look at this. An outline, a bullet list, a headline, a paragraph about, a couple of paragraphs about, a sentence about, a few ideas, a bit of more information, or an email too. So it can pre-select that, or you can type anything in here. And once you define what it is you want written, like a thing, then you have to fill in what the thing is about. So for example, if you're going to write an email, you want to ask it to write an email about something. So you have to put something in there once you've decided what type of structure you want. And I'll give you an example on how this is going to work. So in this example, I'm going to send Huey Poplick a idea I have for an upcoming program at Tech for Senior. I'm going to talk about satellite internet. So I've asked Compose AI to write an outline for a blog post on the benefits of satellite internet. So I'm going to create an outline and I want to send this to Huey. So I've typed in uh, the appropriate uh, terminology, hit enter, and uh, now the um, it's going to write a blog post for me. And here we come up with the uh, blog post, uh, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you get the idea that it's written it all out for me. All right, so Huey has received my email and sent me an email back and said, Ron, this is a great idea. Uh, continue on and send me copies of the final. So I'm going to come back down to my um, my outline and I'm going to look here and see the first really uh, the importance. Um, I want to elaborate on the importance of internet connectivity in today's society. So I'm simply going to highlight this and we're going to copy it. Right click and copy. And then we're going to come down to a couple of lines below. I'm going to open up with two forward slashes, we're going to, go, going to open up uh, Compose AI, and we're going to come down here, and I'm going to say, uh, write a couple of paragraphs about. So I want about two paragraphs. I don't want this too long. And then what we're going to do is we're going to paste that um, into um, what we've copied. So now it says, write a couple of paragraphs about the importance of internet connectivity in today's society. Okay, let's see what it says. And here we go. So now we have the section here. It's written, uh, overall, the importance of internet connectivity will only continue to grow as we come, so on and so forth. So it's written two paragraphs about, um, about the importance of internet connectivity in today's society. And again, you can expand this and go through all the different uh, outline that we've just created and make a 
article or blog post. I can then send that back to Huey right from here because we are in Gmail. So we'll just uh, add that and say uh, uh, final blog post and away we go. So the second feature is called easy email reply. Let's have a look. So the next feature I'd like to show you is easy email reply. Now, if you look at the email ahead of you here, you'll see um, the title is AI and Gmail, and this is from my imaginary friend, Beamer Brown. It says, Ron, do you have any experience using AI with Gmail? Now, if you look at the bottom, you'll see Gmail's automatic answers to reply, and they will be on the bottom here. No, I don't. No, why? No, I haven't. So if you click any of these three, and these would be the standard three that you would see in your Gmail, these are the automatic replies that you can choose. But these, of course, are very short, not very um, friendly. Let me just show you the ones that Compose AI will give you. Now, watch carefully. This is the Compose AI uh, symbol. I can say, yes, I do. I can say no, or I can just say thanks. I'm, of course, I'm going to say, yes, I do. So if I say yes, watch what AI does. I'm going to say yes. So it has created an email for me saying, hi, Beamer. Yes, I do have some experience with AI with Gmail. Let me know if you have any specific questions or concerns about it. A much friendlier and informative email response. But of course, I'm not going to leave it there. I have, um, I have, of course, responded to his, uh, his question, but I'm going to show him a little bit about my knowledge. So let's, let's, uh, let's just add another paragraph here. Remember, I'm going to do the two forward slashes. So I've opened up Compose AI, and I'm going to write a paragraph about using AI with Gmail. Might as well show a little bit of my knowledge here. So we'll hit enter. And now we've added this, artificial intelligence has become an essential part of modern communication tools such as Gmail. Gmail users benefit from a number and so on and so forth. And I've now added a uh, another paragraph here about, uh, about using AI with Gmail. And again, I've responded quickly to his concerns. I have uh, demonstrated some of my knowledge and will be able just to hit the send button and send that to Beamer. All right, the third feature of Compose AI is called Compose Email. Let's have a look. All right, for the next feature, I'd like to show you Compose AI. As we come down, you'll notice that this is a new email I'm going to send. Now, to open the Compose AI menu, what we're going to do is come down to the right, way down here to the right, and you'll see a little blue dot here. We're going to click this, and we're going to open Compose AI. So here we are, and I'm going to respond to an email that I just have. So I'm going to ask Compose AI to send an email to Beamer to have a meeting to discuss training with Gmail and AI. Let's see what uh, Compose AI writes for an email for me. So now we have a number of choices um, about creating an email. Uh, we're going to have a meeting to discuss Gmail and AI training next week. Please let me know if you're available. I wanted to let you know that we'll be having a meeting next week to discuss uh, so on and so forth. So you have a whole bunch of suggestions or you can load more suggestions uh, for this. And again, it's responding to, a, um, to creating an email. And this is being artificial intelligence can respond to various topics you would have in uh, email correspondence. So the fourth feature in Compose AI is autocomplete. Let me show you how that's done. So the next feature I'd like to demonstrate is autocomplete. Uh, let's say I'm writing a letter back to my imaginary friend, Beamer Brown, and I'm going to talk to him about 
AI Gmail. So I'm going to start uh, typing. I am. So so you'll see right away it's starting to autocomplete. I'm writing um, this email to discuss. And again, you'll see that as we come along. And you can, of course, by hitting Alt 2, Alt 3, you can select the phrases that you want quickly just by clicking that. Or you can use the, again, Alt Alt 2, Alt 3. They're all Alt, um, Alt Tab. So I've saved the best for the last. Compose AI rephrase is my favorite feature. Let me show you how this works. So the last feature I'd like to show you is the rephrase feature. And I'm so excited because this is probably one of my favorite out of the five. So let's come back to our email that I sent to Beamer. Remember I said, yes, I do have some experience using AI with Gmail. I wrote this and I think it's just not quite me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this. And that opens another menu down below here. And if you look carefully, the first one is, um, is a friendly tone. The second one is a formal tone. The third option is to expand, shorten, and rephrase. So let me just, I want this to be more friendly. So watch what happens when I click here. And this will now list that that sentence in more friendly friendly terminology. So let's have a look at some of them. Oh, I actually do have some experience with AI and Gmail. Feel free to ask me any questions or let me know if there's anything I can do. Or let's take another one down here. I do have some experience with AI and Gmail. Don't hesitate to ask me any questions or share your experience. Okay, so now let's come back and do the formal. So when we click this button here, this is more formal. I can confidently assert that I possess a certain level of expertise in the implementation of AI in concert with Gmail. Oh, wow. That makes me sound really good, doesn't it? So that's formal. Or suppose I just don't like this sentence. Let's rephrase it. So let's click the bottom here and let's rephrase this. So now it says, uh, this is rephrased, affirmative. I've got some prior knowledge operating AI with Gmail. If you have any questions or queries, please let me know. So that's different than the original one. This is such a powerful feature and one I use all the time. So in this video, I've shown you how Compose AI will help you be more efficient with Gmail. There are five features which you should be using. The first is Compose Anything, where there are templates arranged for you. The second is Autocomplete, where you can complete a sentence or a paragraph quickly. The third is Easy Email Reply, in which it will auto-reply for you in a more customizable form. The other is Compose Email, where it will actually compose an email for you, depending on the question you pose, and then rephrase sentences my favorite, where it will change the reply based on your tone. So these are five features why I feel you should be using Compose AI. Now let's look at if this is free or is there a cost to this. So this is the pricing of Compose AI. If we look at the top, you'll see there's three tiers. There is, of course, the free and basic tier, which I have and am using. You have the premium tier, which is $120 a year or roughly $10 a month. Or you have the ultimate version tier, which is $360 a year or about $30 a month. So let's look at the features on each tier. So if you look at the AI generated text in the free version, you get a thousand words per month. And of course on the premium is 15,000 words and then the ultimate unlimited. You have the rephrase, reword, shorten, expand. You get 10 a day on the free or basic. Premium and ultimate are both unlimited. The advanced autocomplete, you get 20 per day. Or the premium ultimate, you get unlimited. 
And of course, early access to new features and premium support are not available on the free version. So far, I'm really happy with the free and basic version of this. It works very well. And all the features are the same, whether you have basic, premium, and ultimate. The real difference is how much you use it. If you do find your productivity goes up while you use this product, it may be worth getting the premium version for $10 a month. I'll leave that up to you, but I think the free version is certainly something you should try. It's a lot of fun, and I think you're going to really enjoy your Gmail using this Compose AI. Uh, this is the first part of, uh, uh, of a series that I'm going to be doing. Let me go ahead and find it now. Of course, it's not where it's supposed to be. Don't feel bad. Tech for Seniors presents Using AI in 2023. I'm Huey Poplock. This will be the first of several presentations to demonstrate various tools and apps that are available to you and to me for free to create using AI. First, the history of AI. The history of artificial intelligence dates back to ancient times with the Greeks and Egyptians exploring the concepts of automata. However, it wasn't until the mid 20th century that the field of AI truly began to take shape. Early pioneers like John McCarthy and Marvin Minsky laid the groundwork for modern AI, which has since evolved to include machine learning, natural language processing, and computer vision. Today, AI is used in a wide range of industries from healthcare and finance to transportation and entertainment. As the technology continues to advance, experts predict that AI will play an increasingly important role in shaping our world. AI in the 2000s. The turn of the millennium brought with it a renewed interest in artificial intelligence as advancements in computing power and data collection made new applications possible. One major development was the rise of machine learning algorithms which allowed computers to analyze vast amounts of data and learn from it over time. This led to the breakthrough in areas like natural language processing, and image recognition, paving the way for virtual assistance in self-driving cars. Another key trend in AI during the 2000s was the emergence of big data analytics. With more data being generated than ever before, companies began using AI tools to sift through this information and extract valuable insights. This has had a major impact on industries ranging from finance to healthcare as organizations can now make more informed decisions based on real-time data analysis. AI since November 2022. In the years since 2022 November, artificial intelligence has continued to evolve at an astonishing pace. One major development has been the increased use of AI in healthcare, where it's being used to diagnose and treat diseases with greater accuracy than ever before. Another key trend has been the rise of autonomous vehicles, which are now being tested on roads around the world. One area where AI has made significant strides in recent years is natural language processing. Thanks to advances in machine learning algorithms, computers can now understand and respond to human speech with remarkable accuracy. This had led to the creation of virtual assistants like Siri and Miss A, which are becoming increasingly integrated into our daily lives. AI and OpenAI. 
artificial intelligence has been advancing rapidly since November of 2022. And one of the most exciting developments in this field is the emergence of open AI. What started out as a nonprofit research organization was founded with the goal of creating safe and beneficial AI that can be used to solve some of humanity's biggest challenges. The team at OpenAI is working on a wide range of projects from natural language processing to robotics and much more. One of the key benefits of OpenAI is that it is open source, which means that anyone can access its code and use it for their own projects. This democratization of AI technology has the potential to revolutionize many industries from healthcare to finance and beyond. As the field of AI continues to evolve, it is likely that open AI will play an increasingly important role in shaping in the future of this exciting field. Using AI to explain tools available for AI. Artificial intelligence is a rapidly evolving field, and there are many tools available that can help individuals and organizations leverage this technology. However, with so many different options to choose from, it can be difficult to know where to start. This is where AI can come in handy. By using AI algorithms to analyze data and identify patterns, it is possible to gain insights into which tools are most effective for different use cases. One of the key benefits of using AI to explore different tools is that it can help to save time and resources. Rather than manually sifting through vast amounts of information, AI can quickly identify the most relevant tools and provide detailed explanations of how they work. This can be especially useful for startups or small businesses that may not have the resources to hire dedicated AI experts. The tools I use today. During this presentation on AI in 2023, I utilized two powerful tools to help me convey my message effectively. The first tool was Tome.app, which is a fantastic platform for creating and sharing interactive content. With its intuitive interface and robust feature set, Tome.app made it easy for me to create engaging visuals and animations that help to illustrate key concepts and ideas. The second tool that I used today was There's an AI for that.com, which is an AI powered platform that helps individuals and organizations to identify the best tools and technologies for their specific needs. By leveraging the power of machine learning algorithms, this platform can quickly analyze large amounts of data and provide actionable insights that can help businesses and individuals to make more informed decisions about which tools to use. This is There's an AI for That website. It says there are 3,556 AIs for 989 tasks. Just while I've been looking at the website, preparing to record this portion of it, it jumped up three. In the last two days, it's gone up 90 AIs available and 25 tasks. This is updated daily. Let's take a look at what you can see here, and then we'll take a look at Tome the other website that I use to produce this presentation. With There's an AI for that. You'll notice on the right-hand side, you pr probably is difficult to see because of the dark background. By years until a year ago, and then it last May by month up to April and then now. So it's going to be the most recent. And the center area is just launched, and it shows several of the most recent AIs that were released and were made known to this website. On the left are featured AI tools and websites. 
and you can click on any of those. Let's take a look what it shows us. Uh, let's look for Tome just by doing a search for it. That's not how I found it originally. I did some search terms and came across it. But here is Tome. So you could choose any of these, but let's take Tome because that's the one we used. And as we look at it, it tells us it's a generative storytelling has arrived. And then you can visit the website. And we'll do that in just a moment. You can also click on over here to visit the website. It gives a little background of what it is. It's the 127th most recent, and it's in the writing category. You can share this on Twitter. You can share it on Facebook. You can save it so when you come back to this website, it is one of those that you have saved. If we scroll down further, there's 162 alternatives to Tome for writing. And so you could look at any of these if Tome didn't fit your purpose or you didn't like the way it worked or it wasn't working properly. You can go and find several other AI apps and tools to try to see if it will fit what you want to do. As you can see, there's a lot of information here and we'll come back up. But let's take a look at the website. Meet Tome, your AI storytelling partner. And you can sign in if you have an account, which I created for free, or you can just try Tome. When you click try Tome, because I've already created an account and went right to my account. And then you can work with it from here. I'm not going to go into more detail, except this is the program that I use to produce this particular presentation. This has been Tech for Seniors Using AI in 2023. I'm Huey Poplock. Stay tuned for more in this series. Except for my voice, that was totally AI uh, generated. And then I'll be doing more presentations on the several of the different uh, apps that I have tried and played with and uh, either use or have discarded. Okay, good morning, Tech for Seniors. Right about now, I'm having my cataract surgery on my left eye, so hopefully when I'm back next week, I'll be able to see everybody really nice and clear. But today I'm gonna to discuss Johnny Ray, a music icon before rock and roll. Johnny Ray, born John Alvin Ray, was an American singer and songwriter who gained immense popularity in the 1950s. Known for his powerful and emotive performances, Ray's music style was a blend of pop, jazz, and R&B, which helped him carve out a niche for himself in the industry. Ray was born on January 10, 1927 in Dallas, Oregon, to parents of Irish, Scottish, and Native American ancestry. His early years were marked by tragedy as he lost his father at a young age and suffered from a severe hearing impairment, which led him to develop a distinctive vocal style. Despite his hearing problems, Ray began his music career in the late 40s and soon became a sought-after performer. Now, in 1951, Ray released his first hit single, Cry, which went on to become a massive success, selling over 2 million copies and reaching the top of the charts in the U.S. and the U.K. The song's emotional lyrics and Ray's heart-wrenching performance struck a chord with audiences and it remains one of his music iconic tracks to date. Most iconic tracks to date. Following the success of Cry, Ray went on to release a string of hits, including The Little White Cloud That Cried, Please Mr. Sun, and Just Walking in the Rain. He became known for his dramatic live performances, often collapsing on stage or bursting into tears, which added to his appeal and earned him the nickname the Prince of Wales, W-A-I-L-S. 
Now, despite his success, Ray struggled with personal issues, including alcoholism and drug addiction, which affected his health and career. However, he continued to perform and record music throughout the 1950s and 1960s, and his influence on pop music is still felt today. Johnny Ray's unique style and powerful voice made him one of the most influential singers of his time. His emotional performances and catchy tunes captured the hearts of audiences worldwide, and his legacy continues to inspire new generations of musicians and fans. Now, I will add to the above commentary from ChatGPT that even though a white artist, Johnny Ray was initially considered more of a rhythm and blues singer, as his first records were intentionally released on the Columbia subsidiary label OK Records, which was geared to the R&B genre. Also, the backing vocal group on the song Cry was the Four Lads, who had a successful career in their own right. Produced by Mitch Miller, Cry remained on top of the pop charts for almost three months. Now, the first link below is the entire almost 40-minute long concert from March 22, 1958 in Holland, from which I've edited his signature song. The other link is the audio of the original cry for the music playlist. So well done, Ray. I know he's uh, he's having his cataracts done as we as we speak. So, um, but well done. Uh, good uh, good song. So that's the, uh, we ran a little bit over today, sorry, we're, uh, but we'll open it up now for uh, Q&A. Don't forget, we have the premiere video uh, in another, about another half an hour. Uh, I did put the Compose AI, it's not ideal doing a part one and part two of a video. When you chop it up, there may have been some people that didn't see the first part of it. Uh, so uh, I put the link to the video and you can watch the, it in the entirety. Um, it is a it is a fun it is a fun extension and I would encourage you to try it. Uh, try the free version. You can do a lot of fun things with it. Um, and also, I wanted to just remind everybody that I featured a uh, YouTube channel uh, in our uh, Saturday newsletter this year this week called Brett in Tech, and uh, the the featured video that he has was AI in 2023, much the same as Huey does. So it is uh, lots of people talking about it, but it is a very good channel to subscribe to if you're interested in following along new technology. Huey, question, comments, any thoughts? Just a comment about the music. <clears throat> Back when that was popular, I was uh, my desire in life was to become a, a disc jockey or a, ra a radio announcer. And uh, I had a couple of uh, uh, mentors that were on air. And they had me in the studio one day and they were showing me things and talking about things. And so they had me introduce the next song. And the song was, and they had it written out. And it was uh, Jack Beam singing, just ambulating in the downpour. Then they played that song. Very interesting. Yes. <laughs> sort of gave, someone said in the chat, I think it was Dorothy said, getting goosebumps it was it's really yeah. quite quite amazing yeah carl did we answer your question no we didn't what was the question again <laughs> i told you that i wouldn't remember That's i don't not, remember the question <laughs> well the question had to do with uh when i signed up for a pug program to listen to our friend bill james mm -hmm. uh at the end of it it said uh do you want to uh, have it written down here somewhere let's see it says, do you want to save address to authenticator? I don't know what it was, but I said yes. Um, I'm just assuming that that has to do with two-factor authentication. That's likely what an authenticator is. And I I don't know. Did you set up um, Zoom with two-factor authentication? I don't know. Is that, a, is that what we're dealing with here, Bill? Do you know? No, this has nothing to do with Zoom. It had to do with registering for the meeting. I, I left. Yeah, that and that and that's oh, no. using go, that's using Google Forms. Oh, so okay. Been, so, so it would have oh. been something in Google. Uh, uh, I didn't have that when I signed up, but it might be the way you have uh, uh, the Google Forms or Google Google itself with the account that you were in to uh, uh, yeah. how it responded. 
Carl, do okay. you have two-factor authentication set up for Google? Yeah, I do, and and I don't like it. Uh, you know, when it first came out, all I did was send a message to your uh, phone, and it says, is this you? And you say, yes. Now, they've gone a step further, which is annoying. They now want you to enter one of three numbers that's on your uh, phone that was displayed in the message to verify that you are truly telling the truth in the way I read it. <laughs> no, it's going to so say, I think, um, yeah. you know, uh, or something. That's only an occasional response. That doesn't it's happen every, it's every, everywhere. It's every, it's every time for me. Every, if I, if if I log into Google on my computer that I use all the time, and I have to re-log in for some reason, whatever, uh, it's it's really, well, I don't know, it's a three-factor con confirmation to me because in the beginning, it just sent a message to your phone, is this you? And you Carl, say, yeah. do, you have, do you have your cookies cleared out each time you close your browser? No. Because that's I, probably I what something is, something is wiping out the information so that you're coming in each time as a brand new use of your account. And then it will send you that verification right to make sure well, that, it well, is that, actually that make, you that, make, that makes sense uh i want to move on though i i was wondering if you updated that ray song to instead of sending you a letter you send a text message how would that sound <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well and, yes uh it didn't it wouldn't it doesn't come across the same <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll mention when that to ray. when your girl sends you a text message doesn't have right. the same emphasis <laughs> And the other last point was that, you know what, in here in the States, I have Medicare and uh, every year they send you an annual questionnaire about kind of your mental health, health. And it's like, you know, do you feed yourself? Do you put your clothes on, you know, and do you have trouble doing things? Now, next year, they're going to send one. Do you write to, to imaginary people? <laughs> yeah, like, but like, that's pretty normal, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm, I'm gonna, or they're going to say, have you been investigating writing to imaginary people? I'm going to say, uh-oh, they're watching <laughs> what Dr. Ron is saying. Thank you, guys. All right. Drew, go ahead. Um, my question is about the AI and the email generation that you're doing. Yeah, are you um, going to try it? I'm going to try it. However, yeah. um, do you have to go through a web browser with Google Gmail or can you do it with uh, other apps like Thunderbird or Outlook or? Yeah, well, uh, you just... can look on the, you can look on, that is specifically designed for Gmail, but there are other yeah. email programs that do, that it does work with. And you, and, and uh, they change that stats. They're upgrading that on a daily, weekly basis. So the best thing is to go there and in the, um, it's composed.ai. And if you go there, you, you'll see the list of, products that it works with so it's not just short, gmail i know Thanks. the short answers show up on my uh, outlook but i don't remember if uh the chat part is there i'll have to double yeah. check that I, I can't remember you but just go there and it tells you all uh, it's quite a wide variety of 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 um, email programs that it works with but i can't remember which they are oh cool thank you yeah, it's fun. It's fun. You'll have a lot of fun with it. I mean, obviously, if um, there is a t in the paid in the free version, there's a limit to the amount of AI that you can use with it. And that may but if it's for 10 bucks a month, I mean, if it's a really big time saver for you, and it really is helping you, then it's certainly worth the uh, it's certainly worth it, I think. Uh, Jim, go ahead. Oh, <clears throat> I have a question on the uh, chat AI. First of all, where do you get this Compose Gmail? I missed it's Compose. Uh, it's Compose.ai. And Jim, I put the uh, email. I put the link to the video in the um, in the um, in the chat. And okay. what I would suggest you do is bookmark that and watch it again because it. In the first part of the video, I talk about how to get it and what the website is and everything that's there. Okay. Okay. But that wasn't. That and that's at the very end of the video, which is the part I cut out at the very end as well. So that that's in the video, and it'll tell you exactly how to get it. Okay. Uh, one other question: um, Do you have to edit this stuff? I mean, does it work with something like Grammarly uh, to be sure the spelling and all the um, grammar is relatively yeah. speaking correct? 
the AI is all perfect. It it doesn't. It, there's no spelling mistakes with in in the. It, I've never seen any with the AI. It's all spelled perfect. You don't need it, Jim. You don't need it. It'll all be spelled perfectly, grammatically correct. It'll be just, and you get ten choices to whatever you like. Well, then I. It's really a lawyer's. <laughs> it's a lawyer's dream. <laughs> it's a lawyer's dream. Well, that's why I took up criminal law instead of civil. It wasn't such a dream. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's a great one. Okay, good. Um, hmm. Yes, uh, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, in Huey's um, transcription, it missed mm -hmm. off the A in area. It put R, A-R-E, missed off A. So it's not perfect. Nothing in life is perfect. Right. But, I am. But, <laughs> but but it is it is that is now there are a lot of um there's there's i think there's a site called transcribe dot something and and there are a lot of other feature a lot of other sites particularly with ai that have come along in the last couple of years that do that but the reason we wanted to show this is is because it's there if you have if you have microsoft word it's right there on your on your computer and you don't have to do anything it's it's you don't need compose ai you don't need anything it's right in the software now so uh, that's the cool feature with it yeah how i first used it was uh, i record we did a, a zoom board meeting of uh, stug and the secretary uh, just to make sure that she had all of the information to write up the minutes i had recorded it so i had the audio and i just put the audio in went in and i put all the board members names in there and then uh created the document it ended up about 95 pages but i'd send it to her that she could go through it without printing it and go through it online just to double check uh, that she heard things right or she didn't hear things uh, completely she could go back and review it so it worked out quite well for a while and, and also, if if you're if you're watching YouTube videos that are complicated, like you know they're talking about highly technical stuff, and you have to go back and keep replaying it, replaying it, and you're writing notes and trying to trying to figure everything out, you don't have to do that. Just hit transcribe, transcribe it, and it'll just be all there for you. Print it out, and you got it. Drew, but go ahead. Steve, are you going to use that? Do you know about the the transcribe feature in uh, in Word? Through transcribe feature in Word, I don't yeah. know. No, oh, okay. You had a question, but, comment? But mine was I went to compose.ai. Um, mm -hmm. it says that it's a, a, a Chrome plugin only, it's an extension, yeah. So I guess it doesn't work with uh, individual Windows apps. No, it's an extension to, to Chrome, but it works in specific um but there are a lot of other soft but once it's in chrome then then if you're using another another um another email application then it would would work there's a there's a bunch of did you not find that there's a menu there and it gives you all the all the, i think it works with outlook as well i'm not sure i just checked uh -huh. and i couldn't i couldn't get it to come up yeah yeah so, it, it came up very very slowly it took like 45 50 seconds and it is pretty much being very clear that it is a Chrome extension. It is a Chrome extension. Yeah. Um, so. At least the Gmail. Now, the other question is, is it, are the other products, like I can't remember, does it have other products available? Let me just have a look here. Because I, I, I don't use the browser to get, I use Gmail, but I don't use a browser to use my Gmail um well quite often in chromium based browsers i go to the chrome web store and i just insert uh, whatever uh, uh extensions i want to put into a chromium based browser i i went to the chrome uh to ai and it says i have to switch to chrome to get the extension but I haven't updated my Chrome for quite a while, and I'm not wanting to do that right now. 
Uh, and I guess it says part, uh, autocomplete almost everywhere. It works in email, Slack, communications tool, Notion, Coda, productivity, uh, blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on. And um, there, there's a there's a lot of options that it it does. So you'll have to you'll have to look at. But it is a it, the, what I was demonstrating is it's used as an extension in Chrome, and it. Um, and then it it just it just works in in it just automatically works in in Gmail. You don't have to do anything, okay. and you can turn it off. The other nice thing about it too is if you if you want to turn it off, you just it's just an extension. Just turn the extension off or turn it on. Also, somebody in chat had mentioned something about uh, when I did that recording. I talked about uh, uh, a website that uh, or a uh, uh, let's see what's it called. Uh, uh, it was low cast. Well, that's it's gone. So right. It, right, it was just showing what you can do with it. Don't pay any attention to the data that I, I had right. in there. Neil, Neil, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, I, I made a comment that I had gone to uh, to the AI store and it wanted me to pull up Chrome. I haven't updated my Chrome. I'm not ready to do that right now. So anyway, that, that was just a okay. comment. All right. Okay. Well, uh, that was it, a, it, a. It might just just to point something out, it might be advisable for you to update your Chrome browser because there have been some breaches. Right. And the updates addressed those breaches. There were two just in the last week. So if you're not keeping your stuff up to date and there's stuff out in the wild, you could wind up with a problem. Mm -hmm. all right well i want to thank everyone for coming today next week i will um i'll be here but in the background only as huey will be the mc next week uh we will see everybody hopefully you can watch our thursday show this thursday um watch in the newsletter tomorrow we'll have a list of um what the topics will be and Bill James, of course, will has his, have his gadget article, which you should uh, should be watching for. And uh, we will see everybody Thursday, if not next Monday as well. And learning Chromebooks on Thursday as well. Yes, and learning. Thanks, thanks, you. And learning Chromebooks on Thursday. So, bye everyone. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye.